Within this lesson, we'll find common units or number of units to compare two fractions. Within this example, we're asked to compare the pair of fractions by reasoning about the size of the units. So within this first example, we're comparing thirds with fourths. And we have the same number of units that we're comparing, one and one. So we're looking at one-third versus one-fourth. Which of those would be bigger? Would you rather have one-third of a pile of money or one-fourth of a pile of money? Which would be bigger? Right, one-third would be bigger. So we would put the greater than sign within there. Read that whole number sentence with me. One-third is greater than one-fourth. In our next problem, we are looking at three-sevenths and three-fifths. Let's write that out. You'll notice that the numerators are the same. That is, the number of units that we're looking at is the same. Sevenths are smaller than fifths. So if sevenths are smaller than fifths, then three-sevenths is less than three-fifths. We also know that three-sevenths is less than a half, while three-fifths is more than a half. We're reasoning about the size of those units. Sevenths is already smaller than fifths, and the number of units that we're looking at is the same. Here we're asked to compare three-fifths with nine-twelfths. One of our strategies is to take a look at our numerators and make common numerators so that we're looking at the same amount of units. So in this case, we recognize that three can actually be multiplied by three to be able to get nine. So we can change and rewrite and rename three-fifths by multiplying by 3 to 9, and if we multiply by 3 in the numerator, we must do the same thing in the denominator. 5 times 3 is 15. So really, we're comparing 9 fifteenths with 9 twelfths. What's larger, fifteenths or twelfths? Right, twelfths are larger, so 9 fifteenths must be less than 9 twelfths, so that we have our number sentence, three-fifths is less than nine-twelfths. Let's compare these two fractions. We have seven-eighths and we have three-fourths. We have related denominators here with the four and the eight. Let's use a number line to model each pair of fractions. We'll draw one number line to model this pair of fractions. We're in between the whole numbers, 0 and 1. Let's take a look. We have 7 eighths. We also have 3 fourths. Well, let's start with the smaller denominator of fourths and separate this number line into fourths. We can mark 3 fourths on there then. Now, how would I get this number line to eighths using that same number line? Well, I could draw one more little tick mark in between each fourth, separating it into eighths. So we have one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths. Let's mark seven eighths on the line. And in this case, using our number line then, we know that 7 eighths is bigger than 3 fourths. Now, if I did not want to draw a model, I could have written an equivalent fraction for 3 fourths as eighths to be able to find that common denominator. I multiply in the numerator and denominator by the same thing, and I could have renamed 3 fourths as 6 eighths. And then it would have been very easy to compare them. 
because they had the same and common units. We know that 7 eighths is bigger than 6 eighths. So 7 eighths is bigger than 3 fourths. Here we're comparing 2 thirds with 5 sixths. In this case, we have related denominators. Here are the denominators of each of these fractions. Since we have related to denominators, we will find a common denominator. The relation in between 3 versus 6 is that 3 times 2 does equal 6. So we can rename 2 thirds as 4 6. And so we're comparing 4 6 with 5 6. I know that 4 6 is less than 5 6. In that case, we have a common unit that we are comparing. We're comparing 6. We know that 4 6 is less than 5 6. Let's compare these two fractions. It's your turn. Draw a number line to compare them, and then also compare them by finding that common unit. Which of those fractions did you change for that common unit? Did you say 3 fifths? What would you have multiplied by? Write 3 in the numerator and in the denominator. We can rewrite 3 fifths as 9 fifteenths so that we know we have 9 fifteenths is bigger than 8 fifteenths. Our number line and our model to be able to work with this, we are in between the whole numbers 0 and 1. We work with fifths first. Now I have fifths, one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, and I place three-fifths onto our number line. Next says eight-fifteenths, so I want to get to fifteenths. I know that three-fifths is nine-fifteenths. For each fifteenth, I'm going to be multiplying by three, so I need to get three parts out of every single one of those um, fifteenths. And then so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight fifteenths. So eight fifteenths is right there on our number line. So I know that three fifths is bigger than eight fifteenths. So I've used a model, and I've also used common units to be able to show my work. Again, to get from 5 to 15, I multiplied by 3 there, so that I have a common units that I'm looking at. Once I have common units in that common denominator, then I can just compare the numerators, and I know that 9 is bigger than 8.